Hey y'all, today we're going to be covering our first calculus topic of the semester. And this is going to be the idea behind limits. Now, in this video, we're only going to be talking about it graphically and how we can kind of discover what it means just by looking at the graph and its basic definition. Next video, we'll be talking about the algebra, but without hesitation, let's get into it. All right, now let's talk about the idea behind limits. And in order to do that, I'm going to go with a hiking example, and I'm going to go with Amy and Joe. Now, they're both hikers on a trail. Maybe we're in Colorado, and you can kind of see the respective elevations of where they're standing, and also this blue point of 200 meters, maybe that's the distance along the trail. Now, I have a question for you. At what elevation will Amy and Joe meet if they cross paths at x equals 200 meters? So implied in this would be that Amy is traveling downhill, meaning maybe she was an early riser, while Joe is heading uphill, a little bit more of a late sleeper like myself. So if they cross paths right at the 200 meter mark, well, we can totally find out where they're probably going to cross paths as far as elevation is concerned. Now, if you're Joe, as you're walking, you started at 410 meters, you walked uphill, and when you got to that spot, it looks like Joe would be standing at 420 meters. Amy, on the other hand, starting at 430 meters, walked downhill, and she also met at 420 meters. So since they met at both the same elevation, we can say, hey, they're both going to meet at 420 meters in elevation. This idea of guessing where they're going to meet up, as far as your y value is concerned, and notice I snuck in some y's and x's, that, or that value where they meet up is going to be called the limit. It's just the common value based on your estimations from the left and the right side where you're going to meet up. All right. Now I have a mathematical example for us that will really kind of hone in on the idea of limits. So as you can see, I have a picture of a function right here, and I have a question over here. Okay, the question is this. Based around on the points around x equals 1, where should we fill in the dot? Meaning what y value should the point x equals 1 have based on our guesses around it? Well, we could do a couple things with it. The first way we could try to discover it would be just to see what the points around it are doing. To do this, we could construct an xy chart. So, if we were to walk up from the left-hand side of this function, maybe we could start at 0 right here, we'd get a y value of 1. If we bumped it up even closer, maybe to 1 half, it looks like we get a y value of 1 and a half. Getting even closer yet, let's say 0.9, way up close, we get a y value of 1.9. And as you can see, these numbers are trending to a certain number of 2. Now, if we did something similar from the other side, maybe starting at 2, it looks like our y value would be 3. Maybe we get even closer to 1, maybe like 1.5. Our y value would be 2.5. You can find that right here. And now let's get even ultimately close, 1.1. Well, if we were at 1.1, we're pretty close. We'd get a value of 2.1. Now, this might seem um, a little unnecessary because graphically we can just see that as we walk up, the y value that x equals 1 should probably have would be a y value of 2. This whole process of guessing where we should put the y value based on the points around it and estimating based on that is going to be called the limit. Now the mathematical way that we would write this thing would be find the limit of our function, so the limit of f of x, our function, as x approaches the number that we are after. So yet again, this basically says, as x approaches 1 from either side, take note of the y values and tell me the y value that you should land on if we were to fill in the dot. So now that we have our basic example of how limits work, estimating from the left hand and from the right hand side and filling in the dot, let's look at a weirder example. 
All right, so we have a function. We're going to go ahead and call it, you know, surprise, surprise, let's call it f of x. And now I want to ask something. Let's ask to find the limit of our function as x approaches 3. Okay, so how we did it last time is we estimated the y value as we walked from one side and the y value as we walked from the other side. We did this through an xy chart. Now, if you notice, though, from the left-hand side, all the points up to it are telling me fill in the dot at x equals 3 at y equals 1. However, from the right-hand side, it looks like all the points estimated from this side are telling me, well, when you get to x equals 3, based on all these points, your y value will be 5. So now we have an issue. The estimate from the left-hand side does not line up with the estimate from the right-hand side. Well, what do we do? Well, since we define this to be the common point of meetup, meaning the left-hand side and the right-hand side have to agree in order for us to fill in the dot, we actually say this thing does not exist. And this is where the famous Mean Girls joke comes in. However, there is a little bit that we can say. When we are guesstimating from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we have what we call um, left-handed and right-handed limits. So, if I have a little bit of a negative side, since typically when you're looking at a number line, the negative side's on the left-hand side, this is going to be our left-hand estimate. Well, over here, our left-hand estimate was y equals 1, once it gets to x equals 3. So we'd say, oh, excuse me, we would say the limit from the left-hand side of f of x equals 1, or the left-hand limit equals 1. Similarly, we have a limit from the right-hand side, which we denote with a little plus next to the 3. Now, when we are guesstimating purely based on right-side numbers from x equals 3, it would tell us to fill in the dot at y equals 5. So the right-handed limit in this case, would be 5. Now, you will only have a real limit, a full limit, if these two numbers are equal. So that's going to be the criterion. All right, so now, as we just got done saying, if the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit agree, then the real limit exists. If the estimate from the left-hand side, the left-hand limit, and the estimate from the right-hand side, the right-hand limit, do not agree, then the limit, the full limit, does not exist. However, just because we have the limit from the left-hand side and the right-hand side agreeing, that doesn't mean we're going to get the actual function value. So, consider this example yet again. We kind of ran into this one a little bit earlier, and we said we should fill in the dot right there. Now remember, that answered the question, what is the limit of our function as x approaches 1? Well, that is the question, where should we fill in the dot based on the estimates from the left-hand side and the right-hand side? Well, notice that the left-hand limit estimate would end up being 2, and the right-hand side, if we just followed all these y values, we'd guess that right here, we put a y value of 2. So the left-hand limit's 2, the right-hand limit's 2. That means the full limit exists and better be the common value. So the limit of this function as x approaches 1 really is 2. But notice the real function value. The real function value is 3. So we're going to get to that later and when those guys actually meet up, when the full limit actually equals a function value. We'll talk about that next section. From right now, what you should be aware of is just this criterion right here. And it might even be helpful to think about it in terms of the government. If the left and the right agree, hey, we're going to get something done. If the left and the right disagree, then hey, nothing's going to happen. So if we have this, then we're going to have this. Does not exist. Now we have one more example that we're going to get to, and then we'll kind of wrap this video up. And this example is going to capture what happens when we have vertical asymptotes in the picture.
And it's going to kind of really tell us how important the x value is when computing a limit. So here's our function denoted in blue. You can see we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 and x equals 7. And I'm asking three questions. Let's get to them piece by piece. First question, what is the limit of our function as x approaches 2? OK, so now we hone in on x equals 2. OK, remember the full limit exists if and only if the limit from the left-hand side equals the limit from the right-hand side. Well, as we approach 2 from the left-hand side, our y value tends to negative infinity. It blows up downwards. As we approach it from the right-hand side, our y value approaches positive infinity. So in this case, since they approach wildly different infinities, they definitely are not equal, and we would say that the limit does not exist. Second one, what is the limit of our function as x approaches 0? So in this case, now I'm talking about x equals 0, this vertical line right here in the black. Well, as we approach from the left-hand side, it looks like the y value based on those points should be at 0. And actually the same holds for the right-hand side. As we approach it, the y value we would guess would land on 0. So since the guess from the left-hand side equals the guess from the right-hand side, in this case we'd, see that we'd say that the limit of our function as x approaches 0 is actually equal to the y value of 0. That's where we would think it would land. Last but not least, let's attack this other asymptote, the limit of f of x as x approaches 7. Now I bring this case up because even though if we kind of guess from the left-hand side, you get infinity, and you guess from the right-hand side, you get infinity, in this case, we could say infinity. However, what we're going to say is does not exist. The reason we can capture this under does not exist is because this term, does not exist, means that you do not land on a finite term, that you kind of blow up. You could say infinity, but you have to be very careful that you're not in this case right here where you split. So as far as we're concerned, we will stick to the term does not exist. It turns out that it's a little bit more general. If you say something like infinity, you better be right on infinity. It better not be going to negative infinity on either side. So this example really shows how important the x value is. You know, hone in on that x value, focus in on it. Hey y'all, thanks again for tuning in to our video on limits, mostly the graphing side of it today. We'll get to um, the algebraic side here pretty soon. So important tips I wanna leave you on. So first off, remember the basic idea of the limit. The limit of a function at a particular x value is what you think the y value should be based on the points around it. So yet again, the limit isn't the actual function value, it's what you think it should be by estimating from both the right-hand side and the left-hand side. Now, the x value is super important. So, dependent on the x value, you're gonna have different limits, so pay attention to the x value. That tells you from where you're gonna be estimating at. Second point, the limit of our function as x approaches some number, let's call it c, will only exist, so this is the full limit, it only exists if and only if the limit from the left-hand side of our function, denoted with that um, superscript negative sign, equals the limit of our function from the right-hand side, denoted by that upper hand pl our superscript plus sign. So yet again, if the right-hand limit equals the left-hand limit, the right-hand estimation and the left-hand estimation, that's when your full limit will exist with um, the case thrown out if you have infinity involved, in which case the limit just flat out will not exist. So thanks for tuning in to the idea behind limits and the graphics, and we'll see you next time.